The Selari or Southern Pride lives in the southwestern corner of Sabi Sand. They tend to spend time in the Kruger as well, what made this pride a little bit more elusive than the others. However, this story begins with the birth of the five Selari males, who were born sometime in 2007 and at the beginning of 2008. The southern pride was a large pride, with five adult lionesses and nine cubs. The fathers of the Selati males were the golf course males, who were born into the southern pride as well and sired by Rollercoaster and his brothers. After the Rollercoaster coalition had been diminished to only two members, Rollercoaster and his brother moved up north to pursue the Sparta pride lionesses. In 2007, the male offspring of the roller coaster males, who were later called the golf course males, were approaching their fourth birthday. Their fathers were gone and the lionesses didn't push them out. And so it happened that the young golf course males started to mate with their mothers and aunts. They sired a bunch of cubs with them and four females and five males reached adulthood. Contrary to their fathers, the young Saladi males had been pushed out early due to the arrival of the Kruger males Freddy and Limper. Fortunately, they were old enough to fend for themselves. Their mothers taught them well, and while spending a lot of time without the dominant males, the southern pride lionesses were truly specialized and absolutely capable of hunting buffalo without the assistance of a big male and that on a regular basis. When the five young Selati males left the Southern Pride early 2011, the rangers watched them in awe how they approached the buffalo kill. They were still far from fully grown, but they hunted like adults. Down. The young Saladi males eventually moved up north and ended up being chased by the mighty Mapojo, who pushed them out into the territory of the Machingilans. They were too young, they had the numbers, but they lacked the experience to challenge neither the Mapojo nor the Machingilans. On June 14, 2011, they clashed with the Majingis, and one of the young Saladi males got killed. From there on, they kept a low profile and made first contact with the three young spada lionesses. These young lionesses were not yet at breeding age and they too were hiding out from the Machingilans. They were the first lionesses the young Zeladi males made it with. Playing with fire, the Machingilans got wind of it. They chased them back south, but the Zeladi were not giving up that easily. At the beginning of 2012, they were hiding out in the southern parts of Malamala. They eventually moved up north again, trespassing Mapojo territory. It didn't take them long to find a young Shemungwe lioness who had lost her babies just a couple of months prior to a leopard. She was back in Estrus and wanted to mate, and the Saladi followed her calls. And there were the young Odawa lionesses, the daughters of the Mapoho. They just had reached sexual maturity and were actively seeking out mating partners. The young Selati males must have felt like hitting the jackpot, if only there were not the legendary Mapoho standing in their way. But this time not only numbers, but luck was on their side. On February 21, 2012, the Saladi came upon Pretty Boy while he was alone on patrol. They probably would have killed him if Makulu and Mr. T hadn't come to his rescue. 
This encounter boosted their confidence and they felt they were ready to challenge the Mapoho for their territory and their prides. They made their move in the morning hours of March 16, 2012. The Mapojos were weakened by an injured member of the coalition. Pretty Boy had not fully recovered yet and Makulu was already 14 years old. The strongest opponent was Mr. T. He was still in his prime and not willing to give up his territory. When the two coalitions met that morning, Mr. T stood his ground and gave Makulu and Pretty Boy the chance to escape without harm. Mr. T fought for Silati all by himself. The outcome of this fight was predictable. Mr. T was heavily outnumbered and didn't stand a chance. It was his last fight and the Silati took the crown. With the Mapojo out of the way, they went after the Shimuva pride lionesses. And the other lioness, who had made them stay in the first place, joined up with her sisters to defend the cubs. The Siladi changed tactics and pursued the Ottawa lionesses, who were seen mating with them in May 2012. The Ottawa lionesses gave birth in August and September, but these cubs didn't survive. And the last four Mapoho cubs, who were with the Shimungwa pride, were eventually picked up one by one. Even though there are no witnesses to the infanticide, it's safe to assume that the Siladi are behind their disappearance. By mid-2012, all Mapojo cubs were gone, and the Shemungwe lionesses started to mate with the Siladi brothers. In November and December 2012, five cubs were born, followed by another litter of three cubs in January 2013. The relationship with the Shimungwe lionesses, though, wasn't great at all. Shortly after the Shimungwe cubs had been born, the males abandoned the pride. They gave all their undivided attention to the Ottawa lionesses and their eight cubs who were born in March 2013. Another reason for abandoning the Shimungus in the west could have been the Machingilans who were starting to make trouble in the east. In addition to the raising trouble with the Machingilans, one of the Sladi males suffered an internal injury in a buffalo hunt. It was Sladi number two, and some say before the injury he had been the most dominant. However, they were still very young and had not entered their prime yet, as the Machingilans decided to test the waters in the west. Their first encounter was in February 2013, when Selati number one and three got injured in the fight. By then, the hunting injury of Selati number two took a toll on him. His body started to lose condition. Physically, he couldn't help them defend the territory, but their bond was as strong as ever. However, the next attack of the Majingilani came barely a month later. This time Selati 3 and 4 were in the middle of the action and Selati number 2 watched from the sidelines. The Selati brothers must have enjoyed each other's company a lot. 
all four of them were often seen together apart from the Ottawa pride. However, they were kept on their toes by the Majingilans, looming in the neighborhood and ready to strike at any moment. If they would have been one or two years older, I guess, they would have found a way to send the right message. Instead, the position of the four brothers got weakened when they lost the injured brother Selati number two. After he had suffered the hunting injury, he never returned to his former self. He found his final resting place in October 2013. He was only about six years old. His passing might have invited two newcomers, Solo and Cleo, who had not gained any substantial ground in their fight for territory against the aging Kruger male Freddy. The Southern Pride, who was caught up more than once in the middle of this fight, had been split up with some Pride members moving up north and Solo and Cleo followed them. On January 12, 2014, the Selati and Cleo came toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Two days later there was another confrontation and the Selati drove their message home. The Selati got rid of one problem, but the next was already knocking on their door. End of February there was another fight with the Majingilans, and Selati number three got injured. Strangely enough, the Majingilans didn't push on. They gave the Selati some breathing room and time to regroup. Problem solved, on to the next topic, hunting buffalo. A buffalo cow with her calf without the protection of the herd is by no means any match for the three Selati boys. It took them not even a minute to bring her down, and the calf, well, the other brother made an easy picking. After they had finished the kill, they parted ways again. Selati number three was found all by himself, calling out for his brothers. Reunited once more, they prepared themselves for the big day. They strengthened their bond and built up confidence. The next day, the Majingilans were back. They managed to get hold of Selati number three. They attacked him and injured him severely. He disappeared for two weeks and then the rangers found his body. He had died from his injuries. A couple of days later, the two remaining Selati brothers were seen in Savannah. They seemed to be fine. While the Ottawa pride was hiding out, the Selati males kept a low profile. But it was just a matter of time until when they would leave for good. Rangers still watched them in the western sector at the end of May. 
from time to time even in company of the Ottawa Pride. Mostly, they were seen on the buffalo kill, as usual. They even shared a kill with a member of their natal pride. It was a young lioness who got separated from the pride and got stranded in the western sector. Prior to that, she had tried to link up with the Shimungwe pride, but that didn't go well. She was not in good shape and probably grateful that the males would let her feed. While one of the Ottawa lionesses kept the Machingilans busy, her sisters tried to keep the cubs out of harm's way. But as in any takeover, they are the first to fall victim to the new kings. Except for two subadults, all the cubs were killed within six weeks. Their mothers started to mate again and the subadults were on their own, destined to fail. But not all the cubs were lost. Three youngsters of the Shimungwe pride made it to adulthood. Two females and one male. In the meantime, the Siladi realized they couldn't hold on to their territory. They left Sabisand and went into Manieleti. And sometimes a defeat can be turned into a victory. They became the pride males of the Talamati pride and in 2015 nine cubs were born. A year later the young daughters of the former pride males the Matimbas had reached sexual maturity. They gave birth to their cubs in 2016 which boosted the number of pride members to almost 20. After their mothers had been killed, the three Shimungwe youngsters followed their fathers into Manieleti. It's not known what became of the male. But the two females stayed together until one of them died in 2020. The last Shimungwe lioness returned to Sabisand, to the land where she grew up. Remarkably, she bonded with a young Ottawa lioness who had been expelled from the pride. Today, they both live in the western sector of Sabi Sand, which is the former territory of their mothers. In addition to them, four Telemati youngsters reached adulthood, two males and two females. The two Talamati lionesses are currently split from the pride and live with their mother in the northern sector of Sabi Sand. The two Talamati sons roamed Sabi Sand for quite some time and ended up in the southern region. Remarkably, they spent a good part of 2019 with their relatives from the southern pride. The last time they were seen in that area was in March 2020. After that, like many before them, they disappeared into Kruger. Except for some disputes with the Tandi Imp males and later the Birmingham males, the Salati had a firm grip on their territory. That was until one of them got injured in a fight with the Birmingham males. Salati No. 4 battled the injury for nearly nine months, but his body started to lose condition by the end of 2016. His brother stayed by his side until the very end in February 2017. Only two months after Silati IV had died, his brother disappeared. 
he was last seen alive and well in the company of the Talamati Pride on April 10, 2017. It's a mystery what happened to him, he vanished without a trace. He was nine and a half years old and still in his prime. He was healthy and strong and the question why he disappeared remains unanswered. A month prior to his disappearance, he had been involved in another fight with the Birmingham males and that's why some believe he had been driven out or even killed by them. The Saladi were dominant over three prides for nearly five years. Even though they only controlled a small part of Sabi Sand and Manieleti, we remember them as the coalition who ousted the legendary Mapoho and were one of the best buffalo hunters in recent times. <laughs>